Hey guys, Professor O'Kane here. Lots of people have made a big deal about Josh. Is it hype or is he really brilliant? At the time Fender had their new Acoustasonic guitar come out, Josh played this tune and Fender used it to promote their guitar. So if you have this in your ear already, brilliant. If you don't, you're gonna get it in your ear and then we're going to break down everything in it. And it really has the potential to transform your playing. Seriously, if you put this stuff into practice, the sky's the limit. In my opinion, every musician that works at writing music has this moment where everything coalesces and comes together in this incredible expression. Here we have Josh doing it all in one minute. There are flavors of impressionism, jazz, gypsy jazz, modulations that make sense, motifs. This is truly not hype. It's brilliant. Let's forget about the words for right now and let's learn how to do this stuff. I broke this tune up into a bunch of sections. I'm gonna play it at half speed with Josh because it's freaking fast. You're gonna be able to see what's inside the section and then I'm gonna show you a way you can use it for your own stuff. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Speaking of stuff, I finally got my stuff together and set up a Patreon page. If you like this channel and you're learning some from the content that I'm providing, please consider becoming a patron. I do all the work myself, and if I told you that this takes a long time to put together, well, I'd be lying, because it takes a very long time to put together. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. I have my guitar resting on my left knee. I'm in the proper meter position. This is a very awkward position for me, and it took quite a bit of getting used to, but I can tell you this. It's going to really serve you, especially if your hands are not the biggest. Some of these cards are quite stretchy. You're right in the position to play a stretchy card. Josh has this very cool cushion that goes underneath the guitar that allows you to keep both feet flat on the ground. It's great for your posture. It's great for your back. I don't have one. What I do have is this. I have one of these footstools. This thing has nearly taken my life over a dozen times. It's also nearly broken every one of my toes over the past three decades, but it's deadly in the bad way, but it does the job. <laughs> So there are five cards here with four of them being an A major. We will talk about the circles strumming pattern that he's using in order to make this sound so harp-like. Josh is picking in a circular pattern. This is how you're going to achieve this circular strum. You drag your pick backwards, and then when you get to the A string, you strike it again. To do it like this, is that's really difficult. So adding the circular motion to it regulates the pick a little bit. Now, you want it to be even all the way through. It's like, it's an even arpeggio, basically. A way that you can work this out to make it sound smooth is just to take the top three strings and go 
and the same thing with the bottom strings. There are a couple really cool takeaways directly from this progression here. Number one is you can take the first voicing. This is an A major seven plus 11, 13. I know it's got a lot of stuff, but it's a sharp 11, 13 chord. The fourth finger is the sharp 11. So that means on any major seven chord, you could just put your fourth finger using the same grip and you can put that on the sharp 11. And what do we have? Let's try it in E. Very cool. What if we did it in G? The next thing is a little bit more complicated, but pretty simple still because we're just talking about grips here. If we look at this diminished major seven, the one that is not in the key of A, Josh uses that to resolve to. If I take this grip right here, diminished major seven, I see my fourth fingers on the root. So if I want to transpose it to E, I could do this. Well, that sounds really cool. Going back to A, our original progression, we know that diminished chords repeat every minor third. So I could do this. Go up a minor third and then resolve it. So Joss goes like this, right here we're in the Lydian fingering, it looks like the Lydian scale. So we have the pentatonic, here are the triads, this is actually an A major 7 arpeggio and then there's my B triad. So. This shape is quite common these days. It's beautiful. What's one of the takeaways from this? You can use that over any major seven chord. So if I was in C or C Lydian, What really struck me about this line was the contracting chord at the end. So we're in A major, we're going to do an ascending scale from E. And then we're to pentatonicville and we got a pattern of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then one of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then a nice, nice fat B sus chord there, B sus four. And here we go. Here's where you need a bit of that, that stretch here, but your hands will accommodate. One of the two cool takeaways that we have here is we have this very cool pentatonic pattern. A really easy way to think about this. I'm coming out of the minor seven pattern, right? Listen to how it sounds over an A bass. So whenever I have a major seven chord, I could think I'm just going to do the minor pentatonic from its major third. The next takeaway is this great contracting chord here we have. So again, whenever I see that major seven chord. I'm going to try. Josh just took us from this contracting chord, which to me has this impressionistic vibe, to this McCoy Tynerish barrage of fourth chords, which traverse a couple of keys, ending in this beautiful A minor nine voicing. I like to take my second finger, press two strings at once, the G and the C, and then play the 11th and 9th above that. Mm -hmm. 
In this section, Josh is in A minor and he does a restatement of the initial melody, but everything is transposed to A minor. The takeaway here are these great A Dorian modal voicings. Okay, that was crazy. So it's all A minor pentatonic up to that point. This is a really nice shape here. Great intervals. Then it goes into a pattern of seven. Now we're in a Dorian sound. And now we're going to be bridging into B minor pentatonic. Dorian flavors. Now we're into the B minor pentatonic. Dorian sounds. Okay, the takeaway from this are the great pentatonic shapes that lead you up the neck. could take that and transpose it to any key now granted you might not be able to use the open string I've used the open string when that open string has nothing to do with the key like for instance B flat minor it almost becomes a flavor and not oh that's a wrong note <laughs> this shape you can use anywhere so now this next line that climbs into the, the descending contracting chords sounds like this You have this lovely melodic line and you're gonna have to stretch and then you have the melodic line heading down again and a big stretch right here so it's the same kind of shape that we saw earlier when we did this move except now we're doing it up here and this is D major 7 going into We are contracting into G major 7 and then contracting into E major 7. Lydian sound and then it squeezes down to the E major sound. It's interesting to note that we're doing D major 7 to G, so that's a fifth relationship. And then we have a minor third relationship between the G major 7 and the E. So you can take those interval harmonic rhythms and move it to any key and see what you come up with. So many musical events happen so quickly in this piece of music. It's nearly impossible to fully bask in all of the musical goodness that's going on. This next move that Josh does is probably the fastest, most beautiful thing that you miss. <laughs> What's the takeaway with that? Play exactly that because it sounds gorgeous. But you can transpose it and you can get a really nice effect in any key. If I was in the key of G, I just slide G down to the fifth and I have the same kind of effect, but I'm not going to have the open strings. Did we just go from E major to E minor? Or did we go from E major to G major? When I hear this... 
And then it sounds like we've just modulated up to G major. E Dorian or G Lydian, however you'd like to look at it. So you have this beautiful E Dorian open string lick. And what do you do with it? <laughs> play it like that because it sounds great and play it in one of your own lines. This next arpeggio is directly out of G harmonic minor. It helps superimpose a D7 flat 9 flat 13 chord, which takes you back to G minor. You don't have to play it like that. You can jumble up the notes and you can have your own 5 chord going back to the 1. This next section requires a guitar with a very, very deep cutaway. And actually it's not the section, it's just those first few chords in the beginning. So please forgive the dodginess up here. So much of this particular tune was very tense up to this point. So this very cliche sequence is a very nice relief. Now check out this next chord that this E flat minor 9 is setting up. Here it comes. It almost happens so fast when Josh plays it, you don't get a chance to revel in the richness of it. Brown, blue and yellow. This line in D minor is the next thing which takes us right up the neck to this gypsy jazz figure. There are so many things you can do with that opening line. Turn on your favorite funk track, start shredding that line. You are going to get so much mileage out of that finger shape. After this D minor figure, we go right into the circles technique and back into the main theme of the tune. He repeats that figure and then when he gets to this card again, he taps. I want to send a special thanks to Josh Meter for his support. Mate, you truly are brilliant and I look forward to hearing what you're going to do in the future. All the best guys.